Welcome back, everybody, to the Breakdown Podcast YouTube channel. My name is Corey, and with me today, once again, to break down the latest episode of Star Girl, it's Vic. That's me. What's going on, everybody? We are going to talk about the latest episode. I believe it's what episode ten now uh, or eleven. I believe so. Yeah, I think it's eleven. Eleven because there's only thirteen episodes, and we're at the we're pre penultimate episode is where we're at. Which is going to beg a good question here coming up. Uh, so. Uh, before we do, we do want to let you know, uh, we do have a show we do every Tuesday. It's at 7 p.m.-ish on Twitch. That's at twitch.tv slash MillerKing underscore 51. Come by, join the chat, and uh, and engage with us. Let us know what you think of whatever shows we're talking about. Currently, we're talking about DC's Titans as well as Doom Patrol. So if you're into both of those shows, come by and check us out. If you haven't heard of the shows, come by and, you know, listen. Maybe you'll be interested in the show and you'll start watching. And, of course, you'll be obviously a little spoiled by that episode. So, you know, <laughs> you, you got to take it. You got to take a little. You got to give a little bit and take a little. I don't know how that works out. But anyhow, let's get on to the latest episode of Star Girl. Yes, sir. So once again, this episode is Summer School Chapter 11. Uh, we we start the episode off with Courtney um, waking up in uh, the black and white world. Um, and she is confused and doesn't quite understand what's going on. Last we know, she was being sucked into the black void of death uh, that Eclipso provides, and when she woke up, she was just standing in her home, to, in her town, but it was in black and white, and there were just kind of people milling around, and she didn't know what was going on. Um, yeah, she is and, officially you know, in the Shadowlands. Yeah, and we kind of figured this was going to happen. Right. I mean, obviously, they're not going to kill off the title character, which, knowing that she went to the same place that, um, what's her name went? Cindy. Then we, yeah, Cindy then we know she's probably not dead either. Right. So, uh, surprise. <laughs> what do you mean, Corey? You didn't think that you, you, you knew this was going to happen? Yeah, I think we kind of called that one. <laughs> we kind of called that one, actually, when she got sucked down the hole. When Cindy got sucked down the hole, we kind of knew that, you know, she wasn't dead. Right. Didn't see the body. Yep, there's if, didn't if see there's, it. So if there's, if there's no head, it ain't dead. Is how I always look at it. Mm, pretty much. <laughs> um. So yeah. So she ends up getting sucked into the uh, shadow realm, and uh, shadow world, and um. She first runs into the family Zurich at the uh at the the um the diner, and when she walks in, she starts talking to them, and and that's where you realize like all of this is all in her head because um. Uh, what was the kid's name? Bobby Zarek or whatever his name is. He's like, oh, you want me to show you a trick like he did previously? And she lied to him and like, oh, you did it right. And he's like, you're going to lie to me again? And then like he went kind of, you know, Pennywise-ish. Aggro. Yeah, it, yeah. You know, so uh, and she's like, oh, this is so she runs out and uh, she ends up in the school. And as she's kind of looking around trying to figure out what the hell's going on, uh, Cindy pops up and kicks her butt and ends up slicing her, which she's never managed to accomplish in a real fight. But in this world, you know, apparently Cindy is is better than uh, than Courtney because Courtney doesn't have on her outfit and her staff, I'm assuming. Um, so when she cuts her, she realizes she's bleeding. She's like, hold on, you don't bleed here. And she's like, you're real. You're really here. What are you doing here? And that's where she realizes, like, oh, this is actually Courtney. How did you get down here? And Courtney's like, um, the same way you did, and uh, what's going on here? And that's when uh, Cindy's dad shows up, and she's like, I've been down here, you know, killing my father over and over and over again, and it's been great. <laughs> mm -hmm. And she's like, and I've taken you out a bunch of times, too. So, like, she's using her, her free time to, to, to work on herself <laughs> in the Shadowlands. And she, yeah, uh, for her she's like, we, we need to get out of here. So she throws her through another door. Which leads her to another portion of uh, of that world, which I'm I, I think it was, if I remember correctly, it was Cindy's childhood bedroom, and she starts to explain to her what's going on, where they are, and that they're in the world that uh, that uh, Eclipso was created, and that's the Shadowlands. Um, so yeah, so she starts explaining to her like this is where he came from, this is where he gained, this is where he was born. Um, this is the you know, this is what's going on. We're fighting the shadows and um it's not real. And she's like, What do you mean it's not real? 
and uh she's like well everybody here are just like they're it's it's out of your memory like if every he's using your memories to to basically attack you i always love it how in shows and movies this always happens like one person realizes it while the others don't it's like we're watching from an outside perspective and maybe that gives us a more um more knowledge of the situation yeah. but but it's like my first reaction would be this sh this can't be real right yeah so i don't know why this never occurs to people in the first place i don't know if it's just bad writing or it's just a way to to cause a little drama until they finally realize it which if that's the case th that almost makes the writers think the uh the viewer is stupid I think it's about to me. I, it seems like it's designed to make the viewer understand that the person that's that's trapped there, they're actually seeing this thing, and to them, it seems Again. real. But like, like she said, she's like, I like she doesn't know what you know. She doesn't know where she is. Like, I didn't feel like she didn't realize it wasn't like a thing, but she got hurt. Like. There was actual pain involved, so it, there is a certain level of real to it, but you have to figure out like what part of this whole situation is real, and that's the problem for them because in, they can't tell the difference between real and fake until it you know punches them in the face at this point. And they were in black and white. How do you not tell that you're in a different world? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, no, no. But she, but <laughs> it's not that they, she doesn't know she's in a different world. Like I know she like she she looked confused as to what was going on, so she knew she's in a different world, but she doesn't understand what's real. And what's fake. So when she's looking at things going, oh, this can't be real. But then all of a sudden, Cindy shows up and punches her in the face. And she's like, oh, that's real pain. So maybe this is real. Like, you get confused. You would get confused. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's what I think no. they're trying to, to get across. But it's not always easy to do that, I think, in this format. But no. with that said, uh, Cindy's like, you put me in here. This is your fault. And she's going, um, you're the one who brought Eclipso to the party. Um, if anybody's fault, this is yours. Like, how are you going to blame me for something you did? If you hadn't have been playing around with the Crypto's Diamond, we wouldn't be in this situation right now. So back off. <laughs> <laughs> and Cindy's still, of course, like this is nothing's my fault. You know, I'm I'm just a, I'm just a victim. Um, so they continue arguing about it for a while, and uh, eventually, uh, the Dragon King's uh, minions show up and they drag off uh, Cindy, which I wasn't upset about. I'm like, don't go after her. Just let him take her. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but Who but cares? Courtney being Courtney, she goes after her and eventually she runs into Dr. McNiter. Um and he gives her even more of the lowdown. Um uh he's like, You're you're in the shadow realm, like what you're seeing is not real, like what you're doing is not this is like a virtual reality a gone wrong. And he hands her his goggles, he's like, Look, and when she puts the goggles on, she can see the darkness and that there's really nothing truly there besides the the overwhelming darkness. So he's been living in that darkness for like a decade by himself. <laughs> mm -hmm. But in the interim, he also informs um Beth that uh that um Courtney's alive. Um, so they're all happy now. Um, and they're like, we got to figure out how to get her out of there. Um, uh, and they go looking for shade. Yeah. So they, they get, well, they get Jenny to, to find shade using her power ring. Um, and when they find them, he's like, well, you need to help bring them back. There's gotta be a way to do it. Um, and he's like, well, I don't know. I, I don't know if I could do that. You know, it's, it's, it's going to be tough. And they're like, jackass, you did this. This is partially your thing. fault too, pal. Here's the thing. They, when they find him on their little map thing, he's showing up in two spots. Right. They eventually go to a movie theater where he's at. Right. What? I don't Okay, I, maybe maybe we should cover that once we get to that part. Um, Let's move on. Move on. I think I think this. I think there's more to this. Go, but go so ahead. Mike is still searching for Thunderbolt because he thinks that Thunderbolt's the answer to the to the whole problem, which eventually it's going to end up being. But I'm still, yeah, it's going to be because I'm still confused as to which one of them is going to control Thunderbolt. Whether it's going to be him or his it's, friend. It, <laughs> it's def it's definitely going to it's definitely going to come into play because it was brought up this episode. The just the, the episode. one line. Plus, we had the at Lent end of last episode. It's definitely going to play a part in it. Um, and we got two episodes left, so I would imagine he's going to spend next episode looking for it, and then it's going to come into play in the season finale in the final 
final uh final scene yeah so so um courtney time stamp that courtney and uh mcknight are obviously courtney doesn't want to leave uh cindy behind um so he's he they're trying to find her and in the interim that's when they find shade in the shadow uh sorry they find shade in the theater and he's trying to recuperate from you know coming back to corporeal life i guess he's basically he dying. wasn't, he a, doesn't he have wasn't a, a blob at the time so now he's just like he's like i've i've pretty much lost all of my power like i can't i can't sustain and um barbara's like you need to save them from the shadow realm like you know how to do this you took mcniter there you can take you can bring them back and he's like i don't i can't i don't think i can do it i can't do it and they're like you're gonna do it and he opens a portal in the movie theater screen um, in which uh, they're like, you have to come through now. He can't. He's not going to be able to hold us for long. You have to come. He's like, well, we can't leave Cindy, and <laughs> they end up saving her from the Dragon King. Um, and they pull her back. Courtney comes through first. Did Courtney come through first? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Courtney comes through first, and then they uh, they yank uh, what's your face through, and then McNider. Doctor McNider came. Th- he came in through Yeah, second. then McNider comes through. I'm like, okay, so if you guys need to save her so bad, why did you make her go last? Like, that thing could have closed down, and then they would have been screwed. Like, push her out first, yeah. jump out with her. Or all three of you jump out at the same time. I don't understand why you needed to go. I don't that. understand why they – yeah, why <laughs> did everybody have to go one at a time? And then after seeing one person go through, yeah. the second, third, she could have been like, oh, well, screw yeah, it. Just, just like, that push or... the second one through and run through yourself, like, is how it should have gone down. But... Yeah, it's like, I can either deal with this, or I could go through this portal, which – could take me back or it could lead me someplace else who knows right let's let's go for it <laughs> um this is what i do but yeah so uh as they go through um they're you know they're they're getting they're getting back to the real world mcniter's about to uh, mcniter comes through and he's standing there in his i don't their outfits let me let me just comment on their outfits their outfits are like golden age outfits for like DC Hero Golden Age is what those outfits mm-hmm. are like designed around, but there's only supposed to be like ten years, and like it's present time now, and it was only supposed to be like ten years ago when all this stuff went down, right? But they are in like I don't understand the outfits. <laughs> well, McKnighters is going to be the only one that's that would be of that way. No, because Cindy's but would this be. Is my, this is the kicker. McKnighter got dragged into the Shadow Realm, right? Mm-hmm. How does Beth have his outfit? Because she's literally wearing his outfit. It is too big for her and everything. Plus, she has on his goggles, which he went into the Shadow Realm working wearing. How does she have it? It doesn't make any sense. Hmm. Here. There, here here's an idea for uh, the little thumbnail, all right? You ready to do this? Okay. Hmm. <laughs> Hold on. If you're laughing, it doesn't work. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Do that one more time. I'm doing it. Got it. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah. There we go. The, the, that should be our thumbnail for every one of these episodes. <laughs> I don't think about it. Yeah. So, like, like I said, it's it, it was it was all just kind of like a big mind game. She had to go in, figure out, you know, the the games that that Eclipso plays, and they save Cindy. So now that's one more person not dead, because um, apparently, unless you get completely dusted, you don't actually die. He just sends you there to torture you for some reason. Um. Yeah, I have a feeling she's going to end up uh, teaming up with them. Yeah, Shade. Uh, Shade dies um, from overexertion. Uh, and he, or did and he? he dissolves into the same? Well, see, this is the kicker. He, he looked like he dissolved into the same dust that Eclipso turns people into when he kills them. That's why I'm saying he's dead. Okay, here's why I'm saying he's not. Okay. All right. Now, remember I mentioned a couple minutes ago regarding the map and him showing up in two different places. Right. My guess is he is still, because he was in that second spot as well, I don't think that was entirely him. So therefore, he's still alive. Here's so you something think, else you as think well. It was a, a, a astral projection or a split version of himself that he put somewhere else just so they couldn't find it. Possibly. Okay. Possibly. Possibly. Now, here's some, here's another clue as well, too. You know how I like to uh, watch or to look at the stuff in the backgrounds, mm-hmm. right? Okay. Well, that movie that he was watching was, uh, I forget the exact title, 
but it was Dorian Gray. Now, if you know who Dorian Gray is, Dorian Gray vampire. lived forever. Yeah, he is a uh, he was an immortal. Well, he was believed to be a vampire. He wasn't a vampire. He was believed to be the original. He was believed to be the origins of the story of the eternal vampire though he wasn't a vampire they use dorian gray in a lot of shows right now as the quote-unquote you know eternal man and the original vampire uh there's a what show is it that has that uses him right now um the sabrina the teenage witch one has a dorian gray in it dorian gray was used in um what was the one with uh with um league of extraordinary that's the gentlemen I was thinking of I was trying to get out Sean Connery. I knew you were. I was trying to get out Sean Connery. I knew you were. Yeah. So like, and he was in that too. So it's a it's a very tropey kind of not tropey, but it's a very commonly used um, character and character name. So having that in the background, that's actually a pretty good catch because it does kind of tell so. The story. So so my my so that theory either leads to Shade still being alive and not actually being able to die, or Eclipso, who. Is feeding off the basically is feeding off the souls of the living and their and their uh, you know. My other point to that though too is the, their, with the Dorian their emotional thing. Hold on, hold on, let me finish. And I, and I think one of the things and one of the stories uh, that or one of the movies I saw about Dorian Gray was um, that he would kill people and basically would just feed off of them energy, yeah. using their life energy. Yeah, so. I think it might actually be referring to Eclipso, but I'm not positive. But there, it's gonna be it's one of the two. It, it could be that it's referring to Shade himself because in the end, every time Dorian Gray dies, that's what happens. He turns to dust and disappears. Because in, in in every instance of those stories where his name is used and they use that character that character as the as the basis, at the when he dies, he just dis disintegrates into dust. Because he's and so keep old. in mind, so I mean, you never know, and that that's that's Eclipso. That's not Eclipso, that's Shade's exact story. That he is, you know, he's he's ancient, and he's, you know, <laughs> I don't know. And keep in mind, keep in mind, he said he's that movie is is a is a great movie or a good movie right. or something, and he's seen it like seven times. So maybe that's a hint. Maybe, maybe that's maybe. a hint. But that's how the episode ends. Uh, we don't really get a whole lot of, uh, again, since it's going into the penultimate episode, they're not going to give you a whole lot um, besides the fact that like now the team is sort of getting back together because Yolanda pops back up as well at one point. Um, so yeah. it's 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 going to be like, okay, now we're going to need to go break out Rick, who's mysteriously, like his, his I think his, like, his uncle's going to like drop the charges and he's going to get let go or something silly like that. So he's not really going to have any consequence to what he did by the time it's all said and done. Um, that or Grunny's just going to punch a hole in the wall and drag him out of there. Um, but in this penultimate episode, we're going to see um, we're going to see Grundy show back up to help them fight him. We're going to probably see Thunderbolt pop up towards the end of the episode uh, for the penultimate. And we're going to see Cindy trying to go find Artemis and get her involved again. Who I think Artemis is probably going to tell her to go piss off, but I'm not sure. So we'll see how that ends. But that's the end of the episode. And there you go. And all right, that's going to end this video. I mean, I don't really have much else to say about it. I think uh, I think we uh, I got everything the the questions and the uh, the the clues, right. if you will, uh, that were in there. I think I uh, I think uh, I touched on every one of them. You have anything? I hope that's it for me. All right. Well, that's we're gonna we're gonna end it. We do want to thank you for watching, and please be sure to check us out on Tuesdays on Twitch. That link will be in the description down below. So, on behalf of Vic. That's me. I'm Corey. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you next time. See ya!